Hey guys, welcome to Spec Transfer and to topic 3.8.4.3, Genetic Fingerprinting from the AQA A-Level Biology Specification. As always, let's start with a look at our specification. First of all, we will cover things known as Variable Number Tandem Repeats, also known as VNTRs. We should know how genetic fingerprinting works and its use in determining genetic relationships and in determining the genetic variability within a population. Finally, we should know the use of genetic fingerprinting in the fields of forensic science, medical diagnosis, as well as animal and plant breeding. So let's make a start. First of all, we need to know about variable number tandem repeats, which can be abbreviated to VNTRs. Some of the genome consists of variable number tandem repeats, VNTRs, which are the same base sequences repeated many times. VNTRs are non-coding. Different individuals have different numbers of VNTRs, i.e. the number of repeats differs. In non-coding regions, we find more differences in DNA between individuals of the same species, as mutations in coding regions aren't usually inherited. Therefore, the probability of two individuals having the same number of VNTRs is very low. Next, we need to know about genetic fingerprinting. How does genetic fingerprinting actually work? First of all, a sample of DNA is obtained, for example, from cells obtained from a piece of hair. Restriction endonucleases then cut out VNTR regions. PCR is used to amplify fragments. Next, we incubate with a labelled probe. As before, this could be a fluorescent labelled probe, which we can then identify by observing the sample under UV light or a radioactive isotope. If there are many repeats, we have longer fragments. DNA fragments are placed on agar gel and are separated by electrophoresis. Electrophoresis is when an electrical current is passed through the gel. DNA is attracted to the opposite end of the plate, which is positively charged, as DNA is negatively charged and opposite charges attract. Longer fragments travel more slowly than shorter ones, meaning that fragments separate, which produces a series of bands. This pattern of bands can be compared to another genetic fingerprint to see if we are dealing with the same person. Finally, we need to know about the uses of genetic fingerprinting. First of all, they can be used to determine genetic relationships. VNTRs are inherited from parents. Therefore, they can be used in paternity tests. Also, they can be used to determine how closely related two people are. The more differences in the genetic fingerprints, the more distantly related. VNTRs can therefore also be used to determine genetic variation within the population. The more differences, the more genetically varied the population. Genetic fingerprints can also be used in forensic science. If the suspect's fingerprint matches that from a DNA sample collected at a crime scene, this can be used to prove that the suspect was present at the crime scene. Genetic fingerprinting can also be used in medical diagnosis. For example, they can be used to diagnose inherited genetic disorders. The fingerprint of the faulty DNA region of the parent can be compared to the same region in the DNA in an embryonic stem cell to see if the condition has been inherited. They can also be used to diagnose a type of tumour. The fingerprint of the DNA of a known type of tumour cell can be compared to that of a cell taken in a tumour biopsy to identify the specific type of tumour. And finally, genetic fingerprints can be used in animal and plant breeding. They can be used to compare how closely related two individuals of the same species are to avoid inbreeding. Great, that would be genetic fingerprinting covered. We have covered VNTRs, as well as how genetic fingerprinting works, and its use in determining genetic relationships and in determining the genetic variability within a population. Finally, we have covered the use of genetic fingerprinting in the fields of forensic science, medical diagnosis, as well as animal and plant breeding. That would be for now guys, thanks for watching, please subscribe, comment, I've now covered the whole of the AQA A-Level Biology specification. To go back and watch content covering earlier parts, you can access all my videos via my channel or by following the link to my AQA A-Level Biology playlist bottom left.